Welcome. Today we're going to be creating shadows using pixlr.com slash editor. Uh, start off with a nice PNG of a rhino here. PNG files work really well because they're transparent in the background, so you don't have to delete out, um, crop out the background image. Um, one issue is our uh, rhino here is going to be a little bit too big probably for this canvas. We might want a bigger canvas. A couple ways to do that. You can go up to image, change the canvas size, make it a little bigger. We'll do that right now. We'll just give ourselves a little more room here, maybe roughly kind of double everything, maybe more. Choose where we place our animal. We'll stick them right here in the middle. Oh, now we've got lots of space. Um, other options for doing that too, uh, you can change the image size. Um, that's one way. You just have to uh, watch out uh, because uh, when you do that, it's going to sometimes damage your image. Like PNG files and JPEGs are susceptible to becoming pixelated if you transform them too much. Um, other way you can do that too, free transform. You can drag a corner in while holding down shift. That's important. That keeps it in perspective uh, or keeps it in pr proportion. Uh, same thing when you go to image size here. You see you can strain your proportions. All right, enough of that. Let's get on to the shadow creation. Uh, we'll start off by creating a second rhino. Uh, in order to do that, we'll use a few quick commands. Uh, select all, control A. Uh, we'll also copy, control C. That copies the rhino. And now we're going to paste using control V. There we go. Got our second rhino now. Uh, watch out, sometimes they'll paste literally right on top of each other and you'll keep on pasting layer after layer and layer after layer. Um, so uh, you'll notice you'll start adding layers. This second layer is now called layer one. We can double click on that, we can change the name of it. I'll call it shadow. And the first one we can call rhino. How about that? We got an ad. Let's close that up. All right, so we have our second rhino and our first rhino. The shadow, you'll notice right now, is in front of our rhino. Um, we'll take care of that here in a moment. First, let's go ahead and make a few adjustments. Change the brightness and contrast. It's under adjustment up here. And we'll bring that brightness all the way down. Uh, next, uh, you have a toggle layer settings button right here. We can click on that, and it'll bring up the opacity. Um, you can drop the opacity, and now you're starting to get something that looks like a shadow. Somewhere around 50% is usually a rough, a rough, nice area to uh, do shadows. It doesn't have to be exact, though. You might want to match your shadow to any other shadows that are in your image. Okay, something that's important about shadows is they should be attached. So if we stick it directly on top of the rhino, that's about as attached as you can get. We can flip the layer, and now the shadow is behind the rhino. We can distort that shadow just a little bit. We'll go up there to edit, free distort. It's right underneath free transform. And you can change where that light source is coming from. You can really bend and warp these shadows to your needs. Just watch out though, because down here you might notice that um, things like the, uh, the feet are becoming disconnected. So you might want to keep that in perspective. Um, another thing, if the light source is coming from behind the rhino, you may want to go over here to uh, layer. Make sure you're on your shadow layer. And go flip layer vertical. It's all the way second from the bottom. Now we got an upside down rhino. That way we could get the illusion that maybe the sun is hitting this rhino from behind. And again, we can transform or distort that, that shadow, depending on what you need. You may have to go in there and do some deleting, things like that. Stretching a little bit by a little bit. Maybe this foot is lifting off the ground right there so it's not in contact with the shadow. So always keep those types of things in mind. We'll confirm that. One other little detail, something I think makes a nice addition. You go up here to filter, and you give this shadow a nice Gaussian blur. That's a third item down there. It doesn't take very much. Kind of depends on how much diffusion of the shadow you want. You can really bring it into sharp focus or uh, go all the way and blur it, depending on how many light sources are hitting that shadow. And you can get yourself something nice there. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching.